Okay, Lindsay, do you want to talk first or do you want me to? Um, you can talk first. Okay. Okay, if you guys are ready, I'm gonna start now then. So um, welcome to Detector Building, everyone. The Detector Building is an event where teams will build a durable temperature sensing device that will accurately measure and display temperatures between zero and 75 degrees Celsius to determine the temperature of four different water samples. Uh, event parameters. So you'll be working in teams of two. Each team can bring one participant constructed temperature sensing device with a laptop or calculator display or an attached display on the device. Um, two calculators, one per participant, one two inch or smaller three ring binder. And at regionals, you must bring your own calibration thermometer. So that's at any regional or invitational tournament. Um, so the competition is made up into two parts. The first part is device testing. So during the testing, you have five minutes before, I believe, to uh, alter your code to change the LED thing, the LED ranges. And then teams will rotate through four different stations to measure the water temperatures at each one. And the event supervisor will record the voltage, temperature, and the color that the LED is at each station. And then the second part is the written test where the main things you need to know are the relationships between resistance, voltage, and temperature, the theory of LEDs, working principles and applications, the process of calibration and operational knowledge of basic device components. Um, before I talk about the construction of the device, I want to mention something that I said on the event parameters. Um, I mentioned one binder for the satellite and mini models you can have. At, at most tournaments, you will, you'll be allowed to have one binder per participant to follow COVID-19 safety protocols, but make sure that, um, especially at satellite tournaments, that you are allowed to have one per, one per participant to follow the rules of your tournament. Um, construction of the device. You must be built using a microcontroller or microcontroller board. Examples include a TI Innovator, Raspberry Pi, or an Arduino, um, a display, LED lights, and a temperature sensor. The sensor must show the voltage and temperature on the display screen. The device must be able to indicate temperature zones using three different LEDs, which can be RGB LEDs. The temperature sensor must be a minimum of 30 centimeters long and immersible up to 15 centimeters, and it must be able to fit in a three centimeter so this is just an example of what a device could look like. And then uh, another thing that we scored on is the design log. So the design log must have a top-down annotated photograph of the device. It also must have a summary explaining how the device was constructed and the sensor was waterproofed, along with um, what each um, what each component, what, what the purpose of each component is. It, ha it must have a data table with at least 10 trials, a scatter plot graph of this data with temperature on the x-axis and voltage on the y-axis, a function graph with the mathematical model overlaid on the scatter plot, scatter plot graph, an equation of the above listed mathematical model and a printout of the code with the uh, mathematical model highlighted and the LED code highlighted. And then here's just an example of like the chart where you talk about how you made your device, how you waterproofed it and like the different labeling of a picture of a device. And now we're on to parts of the written exam. Um, one part of the written exam is relationships between resistance, voltage and temperature. So, um, one important part is Ohm's law. If you're in circuit lab, this is second nature to you. So um, U of V equals IR, which where V is voltage, I is current, and R is resistance. Um, another important part to detect buildings is the Steinhardt-Hart equation. Um, 
that is shown on the screen. And then you all need to know parallel circuits and series circuits. And there's a comparison on the screen. Um, and you'll need to know how to do the math for those. Again, if you're in circuit lab, which I'm sure many of you guys are, then you'll already know this. And those are typically solved using Ohm's law. Okay, so the next part, you're gonna to need to know the theory of LEDs working principles and applications. So an LED, it stands for a light emitting diode. Some facts about it, LEDs only allow current to pass in one direction. The anode is the longer leg of the LED while the cathode is the shorter leg. The cathode should be connected to the ground. Um, the energy moves from the cathode into the, through the cathode and out through the anode. And the color of an LED depends on the type of semiconductor material used within it. You also need to know about the process of calibration. Um, there are a couple types of calibration. One type is transducer calibration. The transducer, transducer manufacturer performs a unit calibration in their lab. Um, you can also do physical end-to-end -end calibration. Um, there's also physical end-to-end -end calibration that focuses on the relationship between physical input and measurable output. Um, there's also data system calibration, which um, is simulating an excita excitation of a transducer. Okay, uh, sorry transducer through physical input. Um, there are some errors in calibration. Um, water can lose heat too rapidly and the sensor and thermometer can, can adjust at different rates. And you'll need to know how, what these are and um, how, to, uh, how to identify them. And then one of the last like overall categories of things you need to know is operational knowledge of the basic device components. So one of them is a thermistor, it's a temperature sensor. There's two main types, the NPC, which is where resistant decreases when temperature, de when temperature increases, and then a PTC, which is when resistance increases when temperature decreases. And a, semi a superconductor is a material which can be cooled to a point where, the where it can conduct electricity with no resistance. And then if you guys have any questions. While we're waiting on questions, um, something that wasn't put in the slideshow at the time because we didn't know about it at the time is um, the current the, the current workings on incorporating detector into the mini model. Um, so from whispers that we're hearing, none of this is completely confirmed and some of this has been incorporated into tournaments. Um, detector in the mini model will probably look like this. Um, Tests will probably be full length tests to, unless an event supervisor writes it to be shorter. So you will generally have the full 50 minutes for the test. And um, depending on the invitational, you will either schedule your device testing in a different slot or you will have your option whether to send one partner or another partner to, you'll have your option whether to do it, schedule in a different slot and do it that day, do it at a different time, or do it over like some sort of FaceTime call with your partner in the mini model. In the satellite model, it'll run as planned, whether it be scheduled in a different part with a full test or however it was done. Um, if any of you guys did Boyceville, uh, you'll know it was scheduled in different slots. Um, uh, where was I? For the mini model, part of the concern for a detector building was safety with hot water. So what the plan is from some of the invitationals and um, regional and state tournaments that may do it, they're looking at doing it 
with, and again, this is, none of this is confirmed. This is just from what I have heard um, and what I've read, what they're looking at doing it with colder water. So they're looking at doing it from like zero to 35, zero to 40, um, if they're doing it mini model and um, like typical over video. Um, so don't stop calibrating your device if everything's going mini, but keep an eye on whether it might be possible at a tournament that is doing that because some individuals might still be trying to get that done and some official tournaments might still be trying to get that done. And there might be a rule clarification out soon. No promises, I really don't know, but that is just what I've heard. So I know that people have been asking about that because it, it has been possible to run detector. And I know that some, I, I know that it has been pulled off not by Boyceville for Mini, but by Boyceville for Satellite. And I know that I, I think some Invitational pulled it off for Mini. I'm not sure which one. So anyway, while we're waiting for questions, that's the information that wasn't on the slideshow because we didn't have it up. Ah, my voice is dead, sorry. It wasn't on the slideshow because we didn't have it at the time, so. Anybody, anybody? 